Alright, so hopefully a quick video to show you something that I put on the previous video about uh, the JST connector that's on a Cadex Vista uh, that I had. So this was a little JST with a PS, uh, PCB um, kind of adapter or component that you can add on to any other PCB. And it comes from a company called Core Electronics that I bought this from and the product name is from a brand called Pololu and it is a JST SH style 6 pin and this is the exact same pins connector that is for the O3 air unit and it allows me to then connect uh, the same plug from the O3 air unit take it out and put it into the Cadex Vista. What's nice about it as well is that these pins here are the same size or same distance apart as the pads that are on the Cadex Vista. So installation of this is quite easy when you line them up and I'll go through the process of how to solder that on so that they do line up properly and um, the way that I found out was easiest to install. And I'll just show you and demonstrate how it goes onto the, Cade uh, the O3 Air unit. Okay, so here on the O3 Air unit, which is on the switch block, it does have the plug. So here is the JST plug from the O3 Air unit, and it has a six pin connector, which is the JST SH 1.0, which means it has a 1.0 millimeter distance between each of the pins. And again, like I said, it's the same pin connector and distance as this one here that Pololu had. So I'll just show you that it fits exactly the same. Like that. And it allows us to put it on the Vista. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I install that. See if I can get this off, it's a bit tight. There you go. And now I'll get this out of the way. Yeah, so now I'll be able to install this. I had it previously on there, but I did take it off so that I could go through this tutorial because um, there was someone else who made an, uh, a comment saying that they were interested in seeing it. So I thought I'd make this quick video. So what you'll need to do firstly, and I like to do this is to protect this PCB and the pins on it so we don't get any shorts. So I've got a heat shrink here that is just about the size of the PCB and a bit larger so that I can fit over this header here. And the reason is so that I can heat shrink it on top of it and then it covers the top part. So what I mean by the top part is this pin connector and exposing only the actual, uh, the actual pads here so that we can solder, but the rest of it from this point backwards and around this and on the back here as well will be protected by the heat shrink. So I'll do that. And the way I'll do it is just to size it up about the width of the PCB. I'll use side cutters here, a bit lazy. Okay. And I might have to stretch that out a bit larger. So I use pliers, just stretch it out a little bit. Doesn't have to be too much for this one and putting it over the top like this. Okay, so I'm just going to slide it on just enough to then ex leave the pads on the back here and the front exposed a little bit. And what we'll need to do is, using a sharp blade, is to cut the top here to allow for that connector to, to poke through. So just cutting across and along here, try not to damage the pins underneath. Okay. So now that the pin header is exposed there so we can actually plug something in. I'm just gonna heat up this and shrink it.
Okay, so it doesn't matter so much that we have the exposed extra bit of heat shrink on the top here. It's easily solved by just snipping away at it and cleaning that up. So there you go. That's all we'll need to do to protect the PCB and exposure of any of the pads there. And now we'll have to start unsoldering it onto here. So the easiest way I found to do this is to start with the solder of one of the pads and then get onto the rest of it. So soldering one, getting it on there and we need to do this while the Cadex Visto is in one piece so that we can actually solder it on and making sure that the back of this they're pressed together so that it doesn't give any leverage to wiggle and then damage the uh, connections that we have soldered on. So I'm just going to start on tinning on one of these ones here on the back here to get a bit of solder on it on one side and then being able to solder it on and getting it to pass through here with the heat on the, onto here. So I might have to add a bit of solder on here as well. So first thing I like to do just to prepare it, make it easier. This camera is just dangling off it, so I'm going to remove it. Here you've got to be a little bit delicate just make sure you don't damage this because I believe it's quite fragile. So getting something on the ends here, popping one side up and very gently and then on the other side as well, popping it up. Yep. And then it just comes off quite easily. Put that to the side. Now that allows me to put it kind of sitting like this, makes it easy to start soldering and like I said I'll add a bit of solder and I'd like to add a bit of solder onto this end here just one end just to get it to kind of ball up and stand on one maybe I'll kind of do it on that one might try it on the other end <clears throat> so I'll do it here Just to get a bit of solder on the end. Might try that again. Okay, so that should be enough. Just so it sits on top of the surface here. You'll see why a bit later. Okay, so since we're using that side of the pad first, I'm going to have to put the solder on this one here, on the back. Now what you need to do is get solder to pass all the way through because we're going to use the, the top end here as the heat to transfer through and then get the solder to, to kind of flow through to the other side onto the pad behind it. So you can see it there when I, when I press these two together you can see that the solder actually touches each other so if I heat one side of it it should flow through to the other side and solder just that one pad. And here's a, the part where it gets a little bit tricky. Got to make sure that all of the actual pads line up with the pads underneath it. So just eyeing it and making sure that they are aligned. So I think in this position is probably the easiest. And it's probably lucky that I'm right handed and I decided to do it on this end first. So let's try that. They're touching now. So if I hold it in position like this and give it a bit of heat. Hopefully that should flow through. Yeah, there you go. It's flowed through. And it should have soldered on. So that's one of the pads now soldered on. Now it's stuck. You've got to be careful now not to move it too much. And I'm going to actually take apart all of the pieces here, including the I guess the PCB is taking them apart from this so I can get to the back because there are solder pads on the back of these that we can access and you'll see why in a moment. OK, 
Okay, so now I'm just going to take this apart and uh, remove the screws and take apart the whole vista. So here I've taken all the screws out and there are these, these little connectors on the, the sides here that actually connect the two PCBs together. So just gently on either side of this while holding it apart, we can pop this one off. So push that just gently wiggling on each side and it starts to come apart. There you go. So the top part or maybe the bottom part I should say. The bottom part is now removed and we do have the little bit of a aluminium heat sink here. That's also part of it. And it comes off quite easily. It, there's no heat paste or anything on here. I didn't take it off beforehand or anything. They just didn't put it on this side. So there you go. You can see here that it exposes those pads that we can now access and then start soldering. So I'll start to uh, I guess I'll try and prop this up and start soldering from the back here and then getting each one of those to connect. So there's six pads and we'll work through them. Okay, so now that I have those soldered on, you can see there that they're all connected into the pads on the other side and they've kind of soldered in there already. You can see the solder flow through out on these ends here. So you could make it a little bit more secure, I guess add a bit more solder is adding it on this side as well, just a touch. Right, so there you go, nice shiny balls of solder on the top here, nice and clean. And the next thing that we'll need to do is just to check that we do have these soldered in right and also nothing is bridged as well, so be very careful and I guess I do have a very fine tip solder, um, soldering iron tip here, so it made it easier for me to do it. It might be a bit, dif bit difficult for some of you out there, but a bit of practice and a bit of patience and you'll get there so there you go this is now soldered on and i'll get a multimeter to test out the continuity make sure that we're not shorting anything okay so i'm just about to check the continuity and make sure that i haven't shorted anything so i'm just going to check the five volt in the ground here none there no continuity and the five volt with the rx nothing tx nothing this is the other ground for the receiver, nothing. And on the S bus, nothing there. So we'll go into ground with RX, nothing. TX, nothing. That's with the ground, so it should be because they're both ground. And here is with the S bus, nothing there. RX with TX, nothing there. RX with ground, nothing. RX with the S bus, nothing. TX with ground, nothing. TX with S bus, nothing. And here we've done ground with everything else already. And that's with S bus, no shorts there. So just with a, only a slight quick check that uh, we're just making sure that we haven't shorted anything, but it looks okay. And I think the solder joints there are pretty clean. So now it's time to put it back together. So putting this back on, I believe it went like this. And then this one goes on top like this. So I'm just going to have to be careful and plug that one back in. So placing it on top. Like this. And trying to press it down. And it clicks in. There you go. So that's all together. Alright, so see how now this PCB is resting up against this top PCB. It's not going to kind of wiggle and then damage these solder joints. And the heat shrink is now preventing it from actually shorting with the aluminium casing or the PCB as well. So there we go, we'll start putting it back together. Ok, 
Okay, so putting the camera plug back in. So just making sure to line it up properly and don't rush this because you don't want to damage the pins on this. They're very fine and delicate. So just brushing off any dust. And then placing it on gently and using a flathead screwdriver very gently just press it down on either side might not be able to see this on camera but okay there you go so that plugged in and then putting this retainer clip back on sliding that in and getting oops wrong one getting the screw back on All right, so there you go. I've put the uh, Pololu JST SH 1.0 connector on here, and that allows me to then connect it onto here with the right orientation as well. So you can then make sure and check that the five volt is on this side, the ground RX and TX, which you can see here, the five volt ground RX and TX, and plug straight into here. And then I can use the Vista on this as well and it's just easier then I can disconnect and reconnect either the O3 Air unit or the Cadex Vista. So there you go I won't be running a test on this at the moment just uh, I'll just link the video that I did previously do on showing this where it was working where I was doing the uh, the Cadex Vista and the goggles 2 connecting on there so I'll link it up here and down in the description as well so you can see that seeing it working and uh, yeah I hope that helped some people out there this is quite interesting I hadn't seen anyone else do this but useful for me because I've been disconnecting and reconnecting the Cadex Vista on various different quads and my configurations quite easily just by putting this on there you go thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one cheers